Okay, in this lesson, we're going to look at the introduction to what is the sine law. Uh, if you are in my class, this is straight out of your study guide. If not, welcome here. Uh, and I've filled out some stuff in advance, and we'll talk about that as we go. All right, the sine law. Uh, the sine law is a relationship between the sides and angles of any triangle. And that's different between that's the difference between this and doing SOHCAHTOA, because SOHCAHTOA, or right angle trigonometry, only has to do with right triangles. Uh, here's what the sine law states. If triangle ABC, and I'm using capital letters for that triangle to represent the corners or the, the uh, vertices, has angles A, B, and C, and sides A, B, and C, lowercase, which are opposite the corresponding angles. So what that means is that the uppercase angles are always opposite their lowercase equivalent. So uppercase B is, lower is opposite lowercase B, uppercase C is up opposite lowercase C. That's an important triangle to understand. If that's true, then the sine law states that the sine of angle A over side A is equivalent to the sine of angle B over side B, which is equivalent to the ratio of sine of angle C over side C. Or if I take the reciprocal of all of those, it would be uh, side A over sine of angle A is equivalent to B, side B over sine of angle B is equivalent to the ratio of side C over sine of angle C. But more importantly, we want to know how it applies. So let's head into problem solving. Uh, and at any point in time, you can pause this video. If you're doing the study guide along with us, you can write down some of this stuff and pause it and reverse it or try things in advance. Uh, example number one here says write three equivalent ratios for the triangle below. So as long as we recognize, and that's all this question is asking us to do, is just set up the sine law for this triangle. As long as we recognize that angle E and side E and angle uh, F and side F and angle D and side D are opposite from each other, we can just set up the sine law. So these ratios would be equivalent. Okay. <clears throat> now let's look at an example, an actual example or application of the sine law. Uh, this question says that we're going to determine the length of AC, and what you'll notice here is that these are both the same questions. They'll be approached in two different ways. We're going to determine this length, AC, which is right here, to the nearest tenth, and we're going to do that in two methods. We're going to use the Math 10 method, and we're also going to use the sine law, or the Math 11 method. And at any point in time, you can pause this, try it on your own. Now, if you're in Math 10, you have to use uh, right triangles. So, uh, since this particular question doesn't have a right triangle, you'd have to create one on your own. And what you would do is drop the height down from the peak of this triangle to create two right triangles. The first right triangle that we're going to look at is this blue one that I'm highlighting in blue right here. So if I use that blue one and I want to solve for this side x here, uh, x is the opposite of 71 degrees, one point is the hypotenuse. So we would be using sine which is the so part of SOHCAHTOA. I've set it up here. Sine of 71 is equivalent to the opposite, which is x, over 1.8. And if we're doing the, uh, to solve this, we multiply both sides by 1.8. And I'll pull up my calculator. And again, make sure uh, that you are always in degree mode. If you're not, then you have to set it to degree mode. Otherwise, your calculator will do some wrong uh, calculations. So if I do 1.8 times sine 71, I'll get an answer of approximately 1.7. So that's the length that I have right here. Okay, so this is approximately 1.7. Now, uh, if I was still in grade 10 and need to solve for the length of AC, I would then take this, what I'm going to highlight in green, triangle, and solve for its length. I'm going to call this Y. And if we look at the 35 degree angle, 1.7 is still the opposite of it and y is the hypotenuse. So if I was to set this up, you would still be using the sine ratio. Sine 35 is equivalent to the opposite, 1.7, over the hypotenuse y, which is what we're solving for. Uh, if I was solving this, or, yeah, solving this, I would multiply by y first. At this point in time, I have y times sine 35. It's equivalent to 1.7. So my next step of algebra would be to divide by sine 35. So on my calculator, uh, y is going to be equal to this part here. So as long as I'm careful, do 1.7 times, no, sorry, not times, divided by, and that would be sine 35. And make sure that I close that bracket. And hit enter, and I get roughly 2.96, which the nearest tenth is approximately 3.0. So that's my solution for the length of AC. We are now going to use the sine law to get the exact same solution. <clears throat> 
So, in order to use a sine law, I have to know an angle and its opposite side. Uh, as we've noticed in the sine law, it's all about angles, which in this case, 35 degrees, is opposite 1.8 centimeters. So there's an angle and its opposite side. Uh, if we're solving for the length of AC, which I'm going to label maybe with an X, its opposite angle is 71 degrees. So we've got angles and opposite sides that are coming in pairs right here. Now, the next thing to determine, since I have an angle and its opposite side, uh, the 35 degrees and the 1.8, I'm allowed to use the sine law. Now the next thing to determine is which version. Am I going to use the version where the angles are in the numerator or where the sides are in the numerator? Well, since we're solving for a side and it's easier to solve when uh, the unknowns are in the numerator, I would use this second version. Okay, So use this for solving for side lengths. Okay, So I'm not going to use this version. And what we're also going to do is always place the unknown in the numerator of your first proportion. So in this particular case, your sine law would look like this, x over sine of its opposite angle, which is 71 degrees, is equivalent. And we're putting side lengths in the numerator, so it's going to be 1.8, which is right here, over the sine of its opposite side, which is over the sine of 35. Uh, so to solve algebraically, we've now set up the sine law. To solve algebraically, I would multiply both sides by sine 71. And put brackets around your proportion here. And what we need to do is be careful with our calculator. And I would suggest always practicing along with me. Um, and pressing equals as often as possible. Uh, your calculator does not know the order of operations unless you tell it to. <clears throat> so in this particular case, I would do the proportion first. So 1.8 divided by sine 35, and I now hit equals. That's the proportion. Now I have to times by sine 71. So I can just hit times, sine 71, close the bracket, hit enter, and we have x is equal to 3.0, which is exactly the same answer that we previously got using the sine law. Okay, So that's how we could solve for side lengths using the sine law. Uh, the last thing we're going to do in this lesson is solve for an angle using the sine law. So we're going to look at example number three here. <clears throat> so again, to use the sine law, what we're asked to do here is determine angle theta and angle A. It's also called alpha to the nearest degree. In this particular case, our opposites would be 80 degrees and 18, 12 centimeters and alpha, and theta and this side length here that we don't know. So uh, the angle on its opposite side that we do have both values for would be these. And in order to solve for something, we're going to have to know one of the angles are opposite sides, so I can actually solve for angle alpha first. So those are the two opposites that I'm going to set up my proportion with. The next question is which of these versions we're going to use. Well, since we are solving for an angle, which is angle alpha, and the angles are in the numerator of this first version, we would use this version, because it's always easier to solve for the unknown in the numerator. We're going to use this version for angles. Okay, uh, so let's set up our proportion. So we have sine of the angle. In this case, it would be sine of alpha over its opposite side, which is 12. So we're setting up the proportion. Is equivalent to sine of some other angle, which is 80 in this case, over its opposite side, which is 18. So we set up the sine uh, law now. Now we need to know how to solve. Uh, the first step of algebra is multiplying both sides by 12. So we'll have sine theta, or sorry, sine alpha, is equivalent to, and again, overuse your calculator here. It equals as often as possible um, to make sure you're being careful. So I would do sine. 80, and hit equals because that's a value. So there's my numerator. Now I divide that by 18. That's my proportion. And now I can times by 12. That's doing that whole thing in one step. So it's 0 0.656. So 0 0.656538502. Now that's what sine alpha is equal to. In order to solve for the angle, the opposite of sine is the sine inverse. So if I want to get my solution for alpha, I'm going to have to take the sine inverse of 0 0.656538502. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm just going to press sine inverse. 
So that's sine inverse is above sine, so I'll press second sine, there's sine inverse. And if I would like to enter in this number and have my calculator do it for me, I could enter in my previous answer. So I'm going to press second and the negative sign of my calculator. So I'm taking the sine inverse of 0 0.65653850, hit enter, and it looks like the angle is 41 degrees, which looks reasonable. So 41 degrees. So that's angle alpha. It's also asking me to solve for theta. Now if I know two angles in a triangle, the third angle is always 180 minus the sum of those other two. So if I wanted to solve for theta, theta is 180 minus the two known angles, which is 80 degrees and 41 degrees, and that is equivalent to 59 degrees. So we've got our two angles.